My name is Stephanie Bedwell and I've been making art for 30 years. probably led me to the kind of art that I make and so much of my work has to do with vulnerability. So my father died when I was young, I was nine years old, and I came up against life and death at a really early age when I um, began to think, well, you know, how should a person, how can a person navigate through life even though we know death is um, close, close by? So these were things that I was thinking about all my life and art was the vehicle that gave me the means to work through it. So for me, art has always been a means of understanding myself, ordering things that you know, are difficult to order and creating artwork that can answer some of those questions even though they're not direct answers, they're more like meditations that reflect back to me how I you know, managed to walk <laughs> through this, <laughs> this world. So um, the pieces here um, are themed, uh, a lot of the work here it has boat themes. And so you can look at the boats in terms of navigation. So again, how do we navigate through life? And um, uh, two years ago I was diagnosed with cancer. So that was another incident of me coming up with, uh, you know, coming up against mortality. But I felt like I had tools in place because my entire life I'd been thinking about this notion of you know how do we live and love in a world where we're going to lose where there's pain and suffering I mean it's a temporal world so um, I had tools you know because I've been working with art and I have a means of having the art reflect back to me um, you know themes about life and death the way I work is that I just let the materials tell me what what we're making. So I don't ever start out with this idea, okay, I'm gonna make a boat. I start out with this idea, these are the materials I'm gonna work with and I'm gonna create this form. And so as I start to make this form, it, the meaning unfolds, it's like um, a dream in some ways. So you have this dream and you don't know what it means, but after you go back and look at it and analyze it, you can see these themes. So the boat themes, um, have to do with this idea of vulnerability. And so when I make these, I'm creating the structure, I'm binding the structure together, and it looks like a viable boat. It looks like, you know, this is a vessel that you could navigate in, and yet the fact that it's knit, it's completely useless. And so that's really a metaphor for how I view you know, the body, this idea that your body is gonna see you through, that you are going to somehow be able to control um, life and you are going to be safe all the time. You know, you could eat really well, you can stay really healthy, you can do this, you can do that, you know, and everything will be fine. And the fact of the matter is, is that's not, it's not how it unfolds. The question is, you know, how can you fully commit to love and living um, in, in spite of the fact that it's temporal and loss and pain is involved. So um, when I look at these, there's, um, I see this um, very peaceful sculpture, you know, that I've created. I feel like um, the, the artwork reflects this peacefulness back to me, and that's really what I'm looking for, is this uh, ability to find you know, find my way. So there's this um, idea of binding in a lot of my work. If you look through all of the, the pieces, they're all bound up together. Um, that's how I create them. And there's a beauty to me in creating a structure 
that is um, tied together, bound together, and made whole somehow. So some of the boats are completely whole, some of them are partially whole, but it's this idea of binding things together and making it whole. And I always leave the process apparent so you can see how things were put together. I never hide imperfections. Um, and that's also this idea of honoring, you know, the imperfections that we have in life and the imperfections that, um, you know, all our missteps can often become beautiful. So you'll see this alchemy that takes place hopefully in my work that, um, that shows the beauty in the process. So the beauty in the process of living and also the beauty in the process of making. So um, being diagnosed with cancer was shocking to me because I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> and I felt like I was you know, really healthy and I took care of myself and it didn't make any sense to me. So, um, you know, the first part of that is just disbelief, and then the second part, you know, there's a whole, a whole bunch of stages in there, besides anger and grief, is just this need for me to somehow regain some kind of control over my life. So, um, part of that was um, looking into nutrition and really understanding a lot about nutrition, understanding a lot about the chemicals that are around our environment, and um, thinking about how you know we live in a very stressful environment so all of these things can contribute to cancer and so I thought about what I can do so how I can change and so you know I did a lot of changing and now I'm to the point where I think you know I've done what I can <laughs> I can't live in fear of being sick all I can do is live with the best quality of life I can. So I love to juice and I eat you know, organic foods and you know, I've never really felt healthier. But again, when that came up, it threw me back into this place that I needed to find comfort. Because you know, there's, it's that uncertainty. Nobody likes to feel vulnerable. It's just a terrible place to be. It's, it's a hard place to be, to be vulnerable. And so the work is a way to meditate and sort of rest in that vulnerability. So a lot of the work has repetition, just this, you know, this binding, this stitching, these knittings. Um, there's just so much repetition and time involved in things I make, and that gives me the opportunity to meditate because I'm not very good at sitting still and I'm not very good at not thinking about things. But if I'm doing something, it's a very meditative process. And so while I'm meditating, you know, and making art, it's a chance to reflect, you know, on, on my experience as a whole, you know, the bigger picture. Um, a lot of the work will have, you know, this perfection and imperfection side by side. And then also I've been thinking about the bees lately, and I'm pretty upset about colony collapse, you know, the idea that the bees are dying, and why are they dying? They're dying because of you know, many causes, um, but most of them environmental, and most of them human, human made. So the bees in my work are a metaphor for, for you know, that part of nature that can't speak for itself, but also that part of ourselves. You know, we don't take very good care of our environment, and we also don't take very good care of ourselves. You know, we run around like crazy people all the time. We don't eat well, we don't rest. Just in general, as Americans, we don't do a really good job with our, our mental health, and we're starting to see that our mental health and our physical health are, you know, inextricably linked. And I think people are coming to understand that. So in some ways, the making of the art is part of the healing process for me is it's a way that I slow down, it's a way that I reflect, it's a way that I attune to myself and take care of myself. So it's the happiest I am is when I'm making something. So a lot of the images are very archetypal. They um, you know, reflect like the basic building blocks of life. They, there's 
sprouts and teeth and claws and all these things that we can reflect on and we respond to naturally because they're so known to us. But they always have something to do with this, this link between body and spirit. So this piece right here, it really looks like a big shipwreck. And um, I think that's what I conceived of when I made it, this idea that often we, we feel shipwrecked. You know, we think we're on our way somewhere. We think we have this vessel that's going to get us somewhere, and we're derailed. But if you look at the uh, artwork, and especially the pieces that look you know, like they're somehow compromised, there's usually a ladder, and that ladder leads up always it leads up and that represents my spiritual connection so whatever you know however you can connect however one can connect to the non-material world I feel like that's the way that you can find um, some kind of peace and resting in this very vulnerable place that we find ourselves so there's these little rickety ladders but they lead up and that's just a metaphor for this idea of spiritual connection, um, something other than the non-material world. And then the other thing that's interesting, or I find it interesting, <laughs> is that all the stuff I make, I find the stuff around me. So this show is entitled From This Place. And so everything in this piece right over here is um, from my backyard and I just go out and I hack things up and I you know, skin the branches and I love this idea that everything I need is right here. <laughs> you know, and that's just such a comforting metaphor. And so, you know, then if I need something to bind things together, I ruffle through my, rifle through my um, materials, you know, and rip things up. Or, you know, I just have so many things collected and I never think about, you know, what am I going to use this for? I just think, ooh, that's kind of a cool material. So I go to thrift stores a lot. Um, I'm out in nature an awful lot. I'm you know, picking things up and thinking, that's really cool, this is really beautiful, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And that doesn't really unfold until the making process, when I start to make something and then I think, ooh, I need, I need this or that. So. Um, that piece over there, you know, it has the elements of, again, the earthly world and the spiritual world, and then binding all these things together. But um, there was just such a beautiful, it was just such a beautiful summer for me to harvest things from my backyard and make them into art. I just felt so blessed to be able to do that. And this piece over here is probably the most symmetrical and pretty boat. So. I like to think of that one as, um, you know how you, you just, everything's fine in your life sometimes and it's, it makes you a little nervous. Everything's really good, everything's just fine. So it's symmetrical and it's pretty and you know it's got these glittery elements, but there's always that part of you that knows that things are gonna kinda unravel at some point. And so I was knitting this mossy part underneath um, the boat and it was on my way up to the Sierras or someplace because I always knit when I'm going somewhere because that's how I manage to make all this stuff. You have to do it in between other things. So I don't knit and drive, but I will knit <laughs> when my husband is driving. So I was knitting that and the whole thing just came unraveled and I was just like so furious because it was this beautiful thing. And I, again, I had this idea of exactly what I wanted. And so I thought, well, I could, you know, toss this, throw it away, but I just thought, well, you know, I'll throw it in my bag and see what happens later. So when I was installing the show, I felt like there needed to be something underneath it, you know, and there I go, rifle through my bag, and there it is, and it's perfect. And so when I look at it, I think that's just how life is, that often these, these unintentional mis- Steps, mishaps turn out to be just exactly right they turn out to be beautiful um, and especially you know if you sort of allow allow or honor that it, it can happen
So um, I was away for a week, and I came home, and uh, the old thrift store organ that we'd gotten from the thrift store, an old Yamaha organ with all the buttons, and it was really, really cool, was out in the backyard. <laughs> I said, so what's up, guys? Why is the organ out in the backyard? Well, we didn't want it anymore. We didn't want it in the room. And so um, I was kind of upset because I thought, well, we could sell this on Craigslist. And I said, well, oh, no, you can't sell it for anything. It's not, it's worthless. So anyway, my son was dismantling it because he was going to put the whole thing in the trash can because he took it out, so he had to at least put it away. <laughs> he had to at least put it in the trash can. And I looked over there and I saw this beautiful, beautiful wiring that was connected to all these little buttons. And I s saw that that's just how we're put together. I mean, it's exactly the same. We have all these nerves and they connect to all these things and make us do stuff. And it was just this beautiful um, metaphor for a spine to me. And so um, I harvested that from the trash dump. And of course he was exonerated for <laughs> tearing up the organ. But um, yeah, so I put that together and then I wanted to make it look more like it was part of a body. And so I created the rib cage. Um, and it was interesting because I didn't really realize that there was another rib cage in the show right behind it until I, you know, the show was all up and I looked at it. So the piece with claws is called Fear. And so it's, again, it's a rib cage and it has dolphin bones attached to it because I found these really cool dolphin bones on the beach. And I just, I find beauty often in bones or things that are, I don't know, a little bit scary or gruesome um, so I was using these I found these bones and I um, bound them together to create this rib cage and then I happen to have these claws but I was just thinking when I was making it about how fear keeps us from being centered and it has these little claws that hook us and how Honestly, it's usually not the thing that we're afraid of. It's the fear that is so gripping. And it's the fear that um, causes us such discomfort. So that's why that piece looks so vicious. It's just, you know, that, that gripping feeling of fear. And the heart um, suitcase, it's that idea that we, all, all of those hearts are places we've been. So there's a heart that's been mended, and there's a heart that's been sewn back up, and there's a heart that has been burnt and has holes in it. And there's a heart that's super spiky. And I have been in all of those places where my heart's been so spiky it pushed people away or it felt like it was you know, burned or um, in some way um, altered. And yet, again, when I look back on those times, those were all valuable pieces. You know, those were places that my soul was able to grow. And so I put them in the suitcase because they're all packed up. So <laughs> that's how we are. We just take these pieces with us all the time. We take these aspects of ourselves with us all the time. And in the other pieces as well, you'll see, um, I know, things that are just slightly whimsical. So the bees have that feeling of... Um, it's, it's scary and serious, but there's also an element that is, you know, doesn't take itself too seriously. So a lot of artists know what they're going to make, but I really don't know what I'm going to make. So the work, I make the work, and then once I've made the work, I look at it, and I can use it to see what I'm thinking about, or sort of uh, what my subconscious or my unconscious is thinking about. So it's interesting because the process seems to be reversed for me, where I make the work and then I look at it and then it reveals, oh, you know, that's what, that's what you're interested in at this time. That's what you're chewing on. Um, but I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> before I start doing it and it's comes it springs so much from the materials <laughs>